library boy over my 40 years in the public library. So, okay, this is one of the family search has got in online and it's constantly changing so just because you check it once doesn't mean you don't need to go back and check it again okay family search international which a lot of you probably are aware of is the largest genealogy organization in the world it's a nonprofit family history organization dedicated to connecting families across generations Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, who are our host today, is the primary benefactor. What is a wiki? It's a website developed collaboratively by a community of users, allowing any user to add and edit content, and software allows the website to be user editable. You do have to go in and register to add and edit information to the wiki um, but uh, this software was developed by Howard G Ward Cunningham who was born in 1949 and he developed the very first wiki and he called it a wiki because wiki wiki in Hawaiian means quick and he was trying to create a quick way for people to build information uh, the best known wiki is probably Wikipedia. I'm sure y'all have heard the pros and cons of that, and that's the same with any wiki, but this is why set up. So you can pay attention to things that are important to you in the wiki, and keep in mind they keep adding other new information and improving it. A stub is the basic article format that they have created and family search started developing this years before this thing went live because when i was attending classes at igHR the institute of genealogy and historical research at which was then in sanford it is now based in georgia there were people from family search attending different classes there and they were talking about the fact that they were trying to gather resources for content to be added to the programmers were developing the stub organization but other people were reaching out to anybody who might have expertise in an area to you know, go in the wiki and links that could be provided i want to remind we watered down but you have to kind of think about this when you're looking at any tool because this will help you understand how you want your brain to get into that kind of mindset. The basic principles of genealogical are that you start with self and work back or work from what you know. You place at a time. You must fully document before you get really excited and dig into the next one back. How many of y'all person and then you go off on this tangent and you hadn't really finished with this other one? I mean, I dare anybody in this room say they've never done that. Okay, good. I just want to say, you, you know it's not what you're supposed to do. I'm just trying to reinforce it. <laughs> to evaluate the reliability and validity of information from more than one source. You know, it takes three good sources really to kind of be confident. And yes, one of those can be circumstantial evidence that you've built the case using other information. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a document. But that means you really have to understand the place and time that your ancestor was living that you're trying to document. And this is one of the things the wiki is the best at. Cannot make assumptions, and how many of you have never made an assumption? Good. I'm glad y'all have got a room full of company. Okay. This is kind of showing the basic. This is showing the whole page, and no, I don't expect you to see it. That's why I'll blow up part of it. But I want you to see how long, because modern web pages, you have to scroll a lot, which I personally hate. But it's the new trend, so we're stuck with it. So, um... 
every article on a type of entity is the same. And there is, um, you, and I've blown up the top part. Notice there's a getting started section of each one of these, and this is the state. So if you were in a foreign country, it might be a province, or in Switzerland, there would be a canton, or do you see what I'm saying? So the basic organization of what they try to include is the same, because they been trying to organize this so that it would be consistent. And there's also a research tool section. When there is information they can organize that way, they try to do so. But you've also got to remember that every state is like a different country. Yes, ma'am. I just entered an Oklahoma search in the search, and I'll show you in a minute and explain oh, okay. how this thing works. No, that's fine. I want questions, but because I'm trying to hone a, an hour and a half talk into, into 40 minutes with 10 minutes for questions. Um, full pages of many articles are going, see this is way longer than the Oklahoma one, right? This is the full page of Coweta County, Georgia. Are y'all impressed? And you see that they've got um, all of the other contents in every county article and most section, which means you can quickly hone in and see that contents list keeps going too. See, we're only in the C's right here. But you can make these things really easy to use. And there's almost all, um, well, I haven't seen an article yet that doesn't have the blue rectangle over there that is for online What I'm trying to do right now is see online stuff. That's it. Just keep in mind, and I cannot say this enough, everything is not online. It is not going to be online in our lifetime, and I'm not talking about just genealogical material the things you're going to need to check out at some point or the other. That all this at the bottom that's not online. So I'm just telling you. So now the online records because we call be a better for me but for them. How much <laughs> so so did you ever have the list of Georgia records that were online so you could browse them? Because sometimes you don't know what's out there. So browsing is the best way for you to further your research. So that can be a starting place. And these are some of the symbols. This little thing, and I'm sorry it's blurry, but I tried to blow it up. It's so tiny on their page, and I kept trying to blow it up, but I wanted y'all to be able to see it. That means that this is a link that is taking you to another web page. Sometimes it's within Family Search, other times it is out of Family Search. So that's the other thing to keep in mind. These the wiki has collected are not all in family so incredibly useful free means you're not going to have to pay dollar sign means there is a charge but just clicking on that link is not going to cost you money I've run into people who won't click to find out what it is because they think it's going to cost them money. No, you have to get further down the pipeline before it costs you money. So, cost. Where can you get a bunch of access to databases? Your local family history center has almost all these pay databases. So take advantage of what your local family history center 
has available for you that are free. And you want to find out, it, sure, it's the pay subscription source, but you still want to know so that if there's ever a free trial or a special and you've got enough stuff in there, you want to be able to take advantage of it, right? You may not want to do it right then, but you want to keep good notes and add them to your research plan, right? So that you can take advantage of this stuff later. I have lots of Scots Irish ancestry, so I'm really a tightwad. And I also, as I said, worked at a public library for decades, so we never had money to spare, so I'm very frugal. Some people say cheap, but you know. I so I scroll down this page just to show you some of the things. So you see their immigration records, probate records. There's a county Percy. Something at some point y'all are going to want to take classes and learn how to use because it's available through Find My Past. And it's one of the most amazing tools you'll ever find. Used to. So, review, like I say, because we've got very little. down so it's still contents that's always handy to know and for Georgia we're lucky Paul Graham has done a great book on courthouse disasters in Georgia and he has tried to actually give you an accurate accounting of what is and isn't there and you will see in a lot of things, particularly old things, where it says courthouse burned or whatever. Well, that doesn't mean they lost all the records. Some of y'all probably remember that horrendous Hancock County, Georgia fire a few years ago, where on the news, this, this I mean, it looked like there was going to be nothing left. Well, the probate records were pretty much gone, but none of the deeds were impacted. So see, if you just say, well, the courthouse burned, you're not going to look there. Well, guess what? So this is all to pay attention to, okay? And then it gives you populations. And so I clicked on the little Sharpsburg thing to see what happened. And it takes me eventually to an article in the Wikipedia. But you just keep going down these places. And, of course, if it's blue, it means that... Um, it is a link. But do y'all see the depth of what has been put in this stub to cover? Now see, I cannot, I worked at a public library for 40 years. I was in the heritage room at the Athens Clark County Library from 1995 or seven until 20 when I went back to part time. And, um, People would always ask about things that could have been answered in this wiki. Can't find my people in this county at this time, and that's because that county didn't exist at that time. Places have genealogies just like people do. So he is the that you go to learn about the place and time. You're trying to find information about your ancestors so you don't waste time looking for something that doesn't exist. And it will lead you to the places that do. All the articles map that show present day relationship to other places. The other fun thing is people went, it's really important that you go back in time too and look at the, the nearby counties because our ancestors didn't always file records where they were supposed to. If the courthouse for the adjoining county they didn't really live in was closer. I mean, particularly in the South where we were an agrarian society, we farmed. I'm sorry, you weren't going to waste time drive, you know, extra day. At the nearby county. So. Uh, do we 
we're supposed to do? No. Well, guess what? I you have to, and this is why this can save you some time and help. Okay, so we're still going down. I'm just trying to show you that even for a relatively small place, there's a whole lot of information, but there's a whole lot that can be added. You know, can we society can add a lot of stuff to this because there are publications they have done that are not listed in this. So they can add. That would be a great project. <coughs> Please pass that on. Um, to make the wiki even more useful. And see, when I clicked on Sharpsburg up there, you get an article in Wikipedia because it showed that there was a leak. So you learned something. So don't assume because it's a teenagey little place that there's not information, okay? Now, to use the wiki to search for records, you're going to need to be prepared just like you are when you're doing any other research. You need to think about what you're really trying to learn about your ancestors. Do you want proof of a marriage? Do you want a death date? Do you need other family members? Consider the location. One of the things that, in my opinion, is the, one of the greatest strengths of all the family search things is their location, because they have got really detailed locations all over the world. And they use them in the wiki, they use them in the catalog, they use them in finding books for their digital book collection. So location, if you, you've got to look for your people in the place and time they were there. So location is usually where I start looking for people. Also, I have kind of like what my time and me want to go cuss a lot. Uh, so you want to think about the specific records that might contain the information. Before vital records were kept by the government, church records may be where you need to look for clues. Do you see what I'm saying? So don't hone in on a type of record. Hone in on where else you might find that information. You work backward instead of forward. So you look life. Uh, think about the record document trails that all of us leave behind. And don't ignore little clues. That's one of the things I'm going to talk about this afternoon in the document analysis thing is how sometimes we only look at a document and ignore it because it's not about what we think we want. Well, that is a huge, huge, huge mistake. So I'm just saying, pay attention. And when you begin adding names to your tree, remember to use full names. It's helpful to know the following two pieces of information before you begin your search. A possible location where your ancestor may have lived, a town, city, county, state, or nation, and a general time frame. And based on the thought process just described, why aren't we just going to records to search? Why are we even bothering with this wiki? I mean, really, why is this wiki? Because all those other things are things we do when we look for records, right? So why the wiki? Well, how much do you really know about the place and time your ancestor lived? Right. So the wiki can help with that. What records were created then and there, and where? What records might have been destroyed? Remember that records loss category? I mean, no point in looking for something that ain't there. Where are the records now? Some of them may have been transferred to the state archives. Some of them may be in a state library. You see what I'm saying? North Carolina. It's wonderful because one of the first places you start with North Carolina research is you go to the place there in Raleigh, the Archives and State Library, because they have consolidated the majority of their county records there. 
So it's kind of a one-stop shop. Instead of starting at the county, you're going to do better to start in North Carolina. So you need to know where the records are or before you go to 10 different little counties where the records have already been sent to Raleigh, right? And what? The laws make a huge difference, and they change frequently. So, you know, we don't do a very good job of teaching history. I thought I was fairly knowledgeable about history because I'd always read tons of biographies, tons of historical fiction, tons of history books. I was a history minor at UGA 100 years ago. And I mean, I really thought I knew a little bit about American history. I knew I didn't know a lot, because the more you learn, the more you know you don't know. Because every time I do anything, I learn something new. So, you know, and I'm in my 70s, so I've been learning a lot new for a long time. So, you just need to be aware that we don't know our history, and we certainly don't know the history of other places, so the we gaps for you and save you tons of time. All right, this is wiki search. Your question is when I could have entered Oklahoma. And I'll show you how the down works. Just like in when you're working in their historical records, you start typing something and it does a drop down. It does it here. Keep in mind too that in any database where it's giving you specific words and terminology, use it. Don't use your terminology because this is what's called in the library world a controlled vocabulary which means the search engines recognize this exact vocabulary and you're going to get better information okay so when they give you something use it don't just type in your own you know wait for it when my computer's slow sometimes it takes me a while i'm going would you please hurry up but don't type it in on your own. You can also click on, a, you know, it's an interactive map, so you can do it that way. I just find it faster to do it the other way. And there's also a search box up here at the top right-hand corner. Can y'all see that? Do y'all see why I said come to the front of the room? <laughs> I'm sorry, I made these as big as I could make them. And you could still kind of see the page. Also, once you've signed in and you get to the wiki page, you'll notice that up here, I'm scared I'm going to knock something up. See, I've got my sign in. This is not behaving. Preferences, all of those things show up. That. And see that thing called watch list? That's one of the handy dandiest tools you're ever going to have, I think where you go in and you set up how you want to interact with it and what information you want to share or not share or whatever. Watch list, as I say, is a handy dandy too. This is me. I told it. I want any updates that appear about Coweta County, Georgia, Duquesne County, Bullock County, Georgia, Anson County, North Carolina. You see what I'm saying? So that you can spend a lot of time in the wiki and then go on to something else. But this will notify you if there are any changes, if they're on your watch list. And it's real hard to set up this watch list. Sorry. Maybe I'm talking about it later, so we'll come back. But basically, on, on that wiki page, that main wiki page, and you tell it what you want and it will do it. Okay, now, you can also search for topics, broad topics. So I started entering African American. I mean, and you see I got to the I, and look at all of the controlled vocabulary. So you, if one of these fit what you're looking for, you would click on one of those, and then the article about that would come up. Okay, so broad topics. So if you're looking for migration trails, if you're looking for um, a religious denomination, some of the stuff is really um, well filled out for religious denominations, other is not. 
that's the article, and of course, you can tell I did four roots text because they had that everywhere. Um, choosing that African American link takes us to this page. Now we're going back to that main search page, and you see over there in the corner that jump start your research. You can click on that. Come on. It takes you to this page, the guided research. And they've added since I looked at this. Constantly improving and upgraded. Family Search and MyHeritage.com are the two places that seem to do the most work on adding new stuff on a regular basis. So you jump start and then you animate this, the, you go to this, that guided resources and it takes you to this list. Sorry, my screen is not behaving. Sorry. And these are the sections over here that I've put in it that you're going to use the most. And you need to pay attention because it really makes working in the wiki more efficient. And I think I talked about those in the ha handout. How many of you, when you're playing on a web website, tend to ignore a lot of what there in little print. I do, and I know I shouldn't, but I do. So this is what the research wiki like. It's giving you to the wiki home about the wiki. Online genie. So there's a quick and dirty way to get guided research where you'd get that list we just saw and you could pick if your country that you needed was there research resources and wiki the other one that you're going to use a lot and this is what you're going to use a lot and three things in here i showed you in your handout are really really useful what um, links are there related changes special pages the printable version how many times do you want to print something or at least get it into a format that you can save to share with others easily um, the page information, cite this page. What's the other important thing besides doing quality research is citing your sources. If you don't cite it, you know, you're kind of up the creek without a paddle. And then browse properties. And these are the areas where volunteers and contributors can find what they need. And the tools refer to the pages you're actually working on. So here's the results list for Montour County, Pennsylvania genealogy. And let's click on cite this page and it comes up with all these different citations. In case you're not sure, in genealogy we use Turabian Chicago Manual of Style. So that's the citation format you always want to pick. Okay, you want to use Chicago Style for your citation. Whenever you're given an option to pull a citation, do it in that style because that's what we use because it's kind of history and law, and that's what genealogy is about. And I'm way behind. Uh, Montour County genealogy, I have no idea why I ended up with that. Sometimes I just go to a place and click on something not even looking and that's what I use as an example so I don't you know I learned something new the printable version turns it into this and you see that it's now 15 pages gotten rid of all the extraneous stuff so if you wanted to save that to reread save it to your computer reread it later and to share with other people doing the same research it's really easy to do now so we're back here to the search, and we're going to do Chowan County. So you see, once again, they are um, pulling in, you know, the control vocabulary. Keep in mind, in the South, in most of the U.S., the county is the level where most local records are kept. New England is a different animal. 
they st the town level is where they keep records, and they started keeping them in the 1600s. So you're going to find births and deaths and stuff. I love it when New England people have been doing New England research forever hit a southern line, and they're going, you know what's in that record? And we go, we know that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you have to work hard now. <laughs> um, sorry, I'm hitting the wrong button or else it's just being ornery. So this gives you an idea. So now this is the U.S. genealogy. I'm speeding through this because I want to. But you see this thing, this section over here on the right. You got that for most countries to tell you what records. Oh, so if you're looking strictly for census records for the United States, or strictly for information on immigration and and um, immigration and immigration, you could just click on that. And it'll take you to another page. See, this, the contents thing that was over here for counties and stuff works within the article. Okay. So let's just do U.S. naturalization and citizenship. See, we get here and we all of this stuff. So if there's something in particular you're looking for, we can do it. I'm going to clip through this fast because, like I said, we are way behind. Uh, and I've got some questions. I'm going to give you all a quiz. <laughs> um, so you see the content, and we scroll through and we click the online records. And so for the naturalization and citizenship from that article, you know. So this is how we got here is we're looking just at the online record. And we're scrolling through. But do you see, if you're looking for what were the rules and laws at a particular time for naturalization and immigration, this can help you. See, 1790 is about when we finally got organized as a country and started doing things. You know, the first census is in 1790, George is president. So, you know, they're trying to get organized. It took a while. <laughs> and so it gives you these time frames for some of the basic parameters to look for. And so you can even find links to naturalization records by state. Now, just like all other databases, this does not mean every record about this is here or online. Keep this in mind for all the databases. None of them have every single record about a single topic. Just remember that because I'm always getting, and people are always getting annoying saying, well, well, it didn't have this person, and I know I've seen a copy of it in my great Aunt Sue's records. And I go, well, you know, they just don't have everything everywhere. But it gives you a place to search, and then you can rule that out. You'll also notice on some of these databases, I'm just scrolling through these. I mean, Family History Library. And you know, the catalog in Family Search searches not only the library now, but it also searches their 400 plus digital book. It searches the history records. So the catalog in Family Search no longer is just, I mean, for decades it was just the library that it searched. Now, you know, that you might want. So effectively. And determine if your ancestor naturalized gives you hints. The census records, because there's some that ask, are you naturalized, and if so, what year? Now, here's the first quiz question. Know where, if your ancestor went to the Southwest Territory in 1992, where did she or he go? Sometimes you're going to find in records that it's talking about some place they went. Do you have an idea? Does anybody know where the Southwest Territory was in 1792? 
so you would know where to begin looking for them? Tennessee. They passed legislation. I know, see, and when I used to read history, see, I assumed Northwest Territory up in the Northwest because that's what I learned in school in Clark County. But at this time period, that part didn't belong to the U.S. You see what I'm saying? But we make where these places are can help you do your research. And the wiki can tell you that. Okay? Do you see why I love the wiki? Now, we're going to talk about Northwest Territory. Records indicate your ancestor went to the Northwest Territory around 1788. What area of the country did they migrate to? Because, see, those were already states by 1788. See, think about the terminology. Probably Ohio, because those north, those western lands that had originally belonged to Virginia that they turned um, after the revolution, you know, that area, they go all the way up to the Great Lakes area. And see, if you don't have that knowledge when you're trying to find these ancestors, guess what? You have just built your because you ain't going to find them. <laughs> Not necessarily, but go back and look and use the wiki to find out, did I do it right, or was I looking in the right place, or is this just another place? My uncle said, my how little counties were I mean, land area, not so much, but there weren't many people. With the in this one county in Virginia in the 1640s. He said there were six, he had many. That out. Um, but this is a picture of the Northwest Territory. See, all of this area. So, so at certain time frames, when they're talking Northwest Territory, this is the area and so this is where you need to be looking for records about your ancestors and territory is where land was given to veterans of the Revolutionary War is this important yes come on move and see, this is Ohio. If you've got people who went to Ohio, you need to spend some serious time looking at their land records. And there's a whole book on Ohio land. And you need to get familiar with it because Ohio up into a gazillion little pieces that certain people were allowed to get property in. Do you see how much access to the wiki or something like this? How much time you would waste? Do you see why I love the wiki? Well, six feet wide, they were the equivalent of our interstates, these migration trails. Uh, they were maybe six feet wide. And nobody came along to clean them up for the people traveling on the road. You know, you got to do it when you got to it. You know, without bridges, you had to ford the creeks or the streams or the rivers or whatever. So they didn't veer far off until they got close to where they were going. So knowing these routes, these migration trails, helps you go back and figure out where people came from, okay? So the wiki has lots of good stuff on migration trails. And it tells you when I search. See, I just put in migration trails. It was I should read, and it's called U.S. Migration Trails and Roads. So that's what I would go to. This. Right? 
this shows you when they started that um, and pre when pre-colonial settlers started using different ones or what time frame and then where it started and where it ended. So this list and if your folks ended up in Greenville, South Carolina, you might want to look at that upper road that's coming out of Fredericksburg, Virginia. The other thing, when you look at maps, you'll find that they're kind of close to the interstate, the routes the interstates follow today. Because these trails were created by critters, then Native Americans, and then we, they, because critters always figure out the best way to get from point A to point B. So, you know, the Native Americans followed the lead of the critters, and then the other settlers did the same. So I'm just saying they came pretty close to the same routes the U.S. government came up with when they were building the interstate system. But this shows what was called the Georgia Road and it tells you when it started and all that kind of stuff. So and you got to remember Athens didn't exist till 1801 and this road was in existence prior to that and it's kind of Going out of Athens, it's kind of the route of US 129. <laughs> so, and then you get more. I'm trying to make sure I leave time. This is the kind of thing also you get. You'll find um, citations to other information. So this was an article on um, Georgia immigration and immigration, so into and out of the state. So the Family History Library has the book. Um, well, I'm not going to the Family History Library anytime soon, but it's also um, an article in the NGS Quarterly. I have access to the archives of this quarterly. So I go to the NGS website and I publications and I sign credentials that verify I'm a member of NGS and I go down to use the archives of the NGS queue. I find the volume and then the page number listed in the citation and I get the full text of the article. So I hadn't even had to leave my home. So be sure to pay attention to these things when it leads you to other places because your local library may have access to that. You see, I mean, there are all kinds of ways you can get this information without you having to go somewhere sometimes, not always. Here's a quick run through of Switzerland. I just wanted to show in foreign country, I think I also show you Belarus. I meant to take that out because I'm kind of a. Um, so, on records and join, ask the community. Double researching, ask that community. They have a face. So you've got the getting started, the research tools over there. You've got all of those. And here's all of the cantons, what we would call states. So you could click on the link to get to the article on that specific place. Are y'all getting the idea that this is pretty easy to use? And they cool. Nation was, but you have no clue what that is. Be very helpful. This one is complicated because you've got Italian, French, and uh, German, and another language that is. We call generically Swiss, but it has another name, which I just escaped me. And then 
these are names. So there's a whole common name list for males and females. So I just scroll down to else so you could get an idea. This is helpful because when you're trying to decipher something in handwriting and you're not sure whether it's a name or a place or, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Could this? Belarus things mean there's no information in that category. So there's nothing right now on land and property in Belarus, no carrier records and probate records. Your records are what you're going to find in most places in the world that were not under British rule. British common law is what is in place in most of the places that were uh, ruled by the British. So like we use British common law, except for Louisiana, because they were first, for instance, Spanish. And civil law is the form that is used in most places in the world. So you also need to keep that in mind and pay attention because those notarial when you're in a place that wasn't under the rule of the British, it's something to play in. We're just going down the Belarus. I'm sorry I'm doing this so fast, but I hope this is giving you some idea of the kinds of things that are in here. And see so here are original records. Sometimes, I'm, this came to me and I want I had a patron who came into the library and said, I have ancestors from Galicia, and I knew there were at least two places that had a place called Galicia. I knew more than that. And it took me a while to track down which Galicia. I'd had the wiki then. It wasn't in existence at that time. So Galicia may refer to Nuevo Galicia, which is um, in north, I mean, in southern Chile. Uh, it's also an autonomous community of Spain. It's also Austria, Poland. Are we talking all over the world here? So knowing where, which would have been important for me to figure out for this guy before we started looking, right? Because, and I know, I knew about the Spanish one, I knew about Poland. I did not know about South America or some of these others. So this is when you see something and you're not sure you know, don't assume you know where it is, because you might not. Did you have a Darien in Central America settled by the Scots? That caused me a hiccup one time. Okay, y'all learn new stuff all the time. And the wiki could have saved my article wish or they were advertising Roots Tech all the time and I hope all of y'all went to Roots Tech and I hope you will take advantage of the great stuff that's on there because if not you're you know you're wasting a great free opportunity because Roots Tech is absolutely fabulous and I spent most of my time I had in the expo hall because expo hall is where you get to, to the people who are creating these products and they always have specials and sales. So I spent my time, whenever I go to an international or national conference, I spend at least a third of my time in the expo hall. Because you can't do that any other time, you know. And you can actually talk to people and get answers to questions. Slavery and bondage. So I'm saying these are the topics that you can get to in the wiki that you may not have known were there. So did anybody find anything that surprised them? And uh, how many of you? Set. I job at that. Because I mean, Done. 
on years ago they filmed plantation records um for um and i probably ought to open the door because there's another group wanting to get in here because we're over time um um they play, and I can't remember the exact name, but they filmed all these plantation records they had. And they were, but finally, a gal put together a book that gave you a way to kind of index them. And if you will give me, I got a piece of paper. I have learned finally to bring stuff. If you will put your name and number on here, I will, or your Email, I will and email it to you. Okay. It will be. She finally put together find some information and find out whether your people were actually in there. Yes, ma'am. facility that's the state library and the state archives they are two different buildings oh I could email send you because if you've got something get there to do research and of that. I don't know. Search for it, but if you know where it is and you have information and go to the county that it's in and add that to the wiki. You see what I'm, that's the beauty of the wiki. When you know stuff that other people don't know, then you can sign up to be a, oh, uh huh? Yeah, thank you. Um, and so you can add stuff. So this is where the wiki is powerful. The more we, in the, the wiki gets. Check a lot. 